Yo guys, it's Sorry, you already know that today we are back reading some more Danganronpa Zero. Uh, today we are going to be reading Chapter 3 of Volume 2. And just before we get into it, uh, I will say that I have s like skimmed through the document that I do have to see how the chapters are sort of split up um, because it doesn't have it split up by volume. And I, the last one that I saw was Chapter 7. I did some researching and apparently this volume is supposed to have like 17 chapters. But I don't really see that many chapters, so uh, I don't know. I'm I'm going to be labeling them as the chapters that they see here, but uh, be informed that these might not reflect the the real chapters of any sort of I don't know. I, I don't know if you even know if this is like uh, like a physical thing you can get or official. I, I don't really know. Um, but either way, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to read it as I have it, and that is what we're going to do. So chapter three seems like it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy one. Um, I, I try to skim and see like how uh, how long of how much of reading I'm in for in uh, in one sitting. So yeah, I'm uh, interested to see what is going to be happening. Uh, we explored a little bit more of Matsuda uh, in the last episode and kind of what he was doing. I um, mean, he was seeing somebody that was like basically traumatized by Junko and like wouldn't say anything, but then like as soon as he said the name Junko, uh, he got like a reaction for like the first time ever. So uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I just I, I feel like. Good things aren't going to be happening, so uh, let's go ahead and just start reading Chapter 3 of Volume 2, and it uh, should be fun. So, hopefully you'll enjoy. Let's get into it. Chapter 3 The sun's dazzling light beat down on the pavement outside the dormitory so brightly I couldn't help but squint my eyes, though it wasn't strong enough to feel my skin. In fact, David shivered a little as the chilly wind ran past me. Despite all this, I felt relaxed and stress-free as I sat down on a nearby bench and let out a deep sigh. Ah, what a peaceful day. I wanted to shout my thoughts out to the wind. I tilted my head to the side suddenly. Huh? Wasn't there someone, somewhere I needed to go? I took Ryoko Utanashi's memory notebook out of my backpack and opened it up so I could verify what it was I was supposed to do, but my hand suddenly stopped. I chance the page I opened my notebook to was covered by a drawing of a man. My heart thumped a little faster. Uh, Master kun I couldn't spot any difference between the picture and the real thing, but my heart was only beating a little faster. Perhaps it's not really all that similar after all. Hmm. I guess if I change it uh, a little, it'll look more like him. It wasn't that I couldn't remember Monster Kun's face, I just needed to use my heartbeat uh, in the place of my memory. Maybe it's the eyes, maybe the mouth, I thought to myself as I draw. After some time, my heart was almost pounding like it would in front of the real thing. Yeah, that's probably more similar. I definitely feel like I have read this exact same line of thought earlier uh, in the novel, which makes sense because Ryoko probably has a lot of similar thoughts as she relives a lot of things without really knowing it. Um, uh, but yeah, in front of the real thing, yeah, it's probably more similar. I patiently examined it as I gazed. Add it, Matsuda Kun, Matsuda Kun, Matsuda Kun. I repeat his name in my mind. See, uh, my heart's pounding. My heart beat harder uh, as I brought the portrait closer to my face. As I drew more, uh, it made the feeling stronger. I don't think I'm perverted or anything like that, but I didn't uh, want to kiss it in a non-sexual way. I suddenly tilted my head to the side suddenly. What? Okay, I, I don't really know what that sentence means. I'm not going to delve into it. Uh, how? Wasn't there somewhere I needed to go? With that thought in mind, I bid for a while Matsuda Kun's picture and began flipping through my notebook. After turning through the pages uh, for a short while, I finally remembered uh, at the same time I could feel my mood take a dramatic drop. I don't know why exactly, but my whole body started to tremble. I remembered, I remember that ridiculous murderous confession. That's right. Nuka Nishima also told me her purposes that time. Kill your beloved darling, Yasuke Matsuda. She said, even if, uh, if I don't remember, I'm still involved. I was still trembling. It couldn't be right. I should quickly warn Matsuda to the crisis season. I need to go to the biology building in the East District. That's where Matsuda neurology research is. I have no time to lose. I jumped up from the bench and started to spring with all my strength. Right now, it was either break time or lunch time, and the school was crowded with students outdoors. I pushed past people as I ran at full speed across the pavement. Of course, the people I pushed past would scream and cry things like, wah, and kya, but I didn't care. Anyway, I was running across the pavement, leaving my thoughts behind and spreading as fast as I could. I left any unneeded idle thoughts fly away with the wind. A bullet of love was shooting directly towards where Matsuda Kun was. I cut directly towards the central plaza and arrived at the East District. I continued past, uh, pushing past the other students and practically dived towards the biology building. My throat was dry and felt painful. In an instant, I was leaping up the stairs. My breathing was erratic and heavy. I continued to push down my thoughts like how much my throat hurt or how much I'd like to take a rest out of my mind and keep sprinting. Um, as soon as I arrived at the lab, I didn't bother to knock on the door. Instead, I threw it open. Masada Kun! I screamed my remaining strength. Short high school boy in the middle of the room straightened up in surprise and began trembling. His eyes were wide in surprise and turned to me. He was completely rigid and frozen. Somehow he doesn't look familiar at all. Trying to think of it, my heart isn't racing or beating any harder than usual. Uh, could it be you're not Masada-kun? Hmm. That's not a clear answer. 
Which mm, do you mean? I ended up yelling louder than I should have, but it was because I was still panting. Um, I meant I'm not him by mmm. And where's Monster Kid? I quickly looked around the lab. God damn it, there's no one else here. He's out now, probably. That's if you looked, you'd know. I roared back at him. I was at my wits end. Ah, come on. I felt my stamina rapidly disappear and fall on my knees. Of all times he could disappear, where did he go? I continued raining while I sat on my knees. The young man uh, ran over to me. It's fine, you shouldn't worry so much. I'm sure he'll be back soon. He looked down at me. Why was he so worried about me? He looked at me with uh, such concerned eyes, or maybe they were the opposite of worried. Maybe they were... Actually, you're a little suspicious, I started. Huh? Or is your personality just like that? I mean, maybe you're the kind of person that stares at clearly distraught high school girls. Eek, keep away. I fell into my bum and tried to scoot away. The boy quickly looked away. Shocked, my skirt flipped up and more and more of my thighs were exposed. Eek, I patted down my skirt. The boy was still looking away with his face bright red and spoke up. I didn't do that. You seemed worried, so all I did was talk to you. You liar, this is the first time we've met. I'm a complete stranger. It's weird to be concerned for something you've never met before. I bet you just have some ulterior motive or secret intention or an evil plan or something. Ryoko has gone crazy. What is happening? Yeah, the atmosphere suddenly changed to a more serious tone. A complete stranger, he turned to look straight at me, surprised. Ah, that reaction, so then... Huh? Uh, have you met me before by, by any chance? As I said, the boy only looked... Uh, surprised... Sorry. As I said, that the boy only looked more surprised, but only for a moment. He quickly changed his expression to a more formal one. My name is Naegi Makoto. Whoa! Okay. He said, suddenly introducing himself. What's he doing here? Ah, it's a pleasure. As I replied, my line of sight dropped down to, uh... Ryoko Tsunachi's memory notebook. Obviously, his name didn't sound familiar to me at all, but I checked for any sign of his name in my notebook. notebook. Uh, his name wasn't anywhere in there. But then we haven't met before. I sent him a confused look. He returned a puzzled expression. His reactions were just becoming more and more suspicious. No matter what he says, this guy is definitely a pervert. Uh, I held my notebook in one hand, stood up and questioned him further. So why are you a student at the school? Huh? Huh? Don't have a reason? Uh, he really was suspicious after all. I stared at him, squinting my eyes. Ah, uh, no, there's a reason. It's just... I wouldn't call it special. Uh, as the sentence fell apart, he looked away. He was becoming more and more suspicious. I continued to squint my eyes. Uh, I get it. The boy nodded reluctantly. It seemed like he finally decided to talk. Mm, since I'm particularly lucky... Excuse me? If I'm super high school level, good luck. Super high school level, good luck. There seemed to be one underlying problem uh, I was pretty anxious to learn about. You're saying your talent is good luck? I don't really get it either, but that's what the school told me. Every year, one person is chosen from a nationwide lottery of ordinary high school students. Uh, that student is entered into the school under the title Super High School Level Good Luck. But by chance, it turns out I was the winner. Hmm, somehow, <clears throat> that's kind of a jip. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Uh, Nagi Kun seemed just a trouble over at his eye. Anyway, his innocence was becoming more and more apparent. However, I still had no reason to believe him. It's much easier to just accept it as it was, though <clears throat> I'm not what you would call a loose woman. Why does any of this matter? I don't understand. Uh, so what is Mr. Super High School Level Good Luck doing in this lab? Uh, tell me, are you an acquaintance of matsuda -kun? No lies. Um, well, <clears throat> nagi -kun pulled something out of his uniform pocket. It was something that appeared to be a thin smartphone. Uh, Yasuke Matsuda-san uh, dropped this. It's always a hassle when somebody loses something, so I, I thought I'd give it back to him, but... What is that? I've never seen it before. I'm sure this isn't your first time seeing it. Look, it's an electronic student handbook. <clears throat> nagi -kun, uh, explained that this electronic student handbook was only given out to students from the main school. It's a high-tech piece of equipment with a variety of uses. It's always just <clears throat> acting as a student's ID. If a student doesn't present it, they lose access to some facilities. I found this by a bush in the courtyard. It's an inconvenience to lose this, so I thought I should come back here so I could pass it back to him as quickly as possible. But he doesn't seem to be here. Uh, what? So then, does that mean Nagi Kun is... It's no good. I can't do it. What? I can't say sorry to you for saying you're suspicious. You're only pretending to be a nice guy. I'm not suspicious, he quickly shook his head. I'm not pretending to be nice or anything either. I just... Came back to Gumatsu-san's lost item. That's really all there is to it. Really? Really? I feel like she trusted everybody else that she's come across, like, so much more. I, like, I guess she's in, like, a little bit more state of a panic, but, like, she didn't have this problem with, um, oh, uh, what's his face, Kam Kamishiro? Didn't have this problem with, like, Junko. Well, she kind of did, but, like, I, I don't know. She seems unusually suspicious of, like, people that I don't know that she normally would be. Um... I don't know, maybe the story is just trying to do this because this is, like, the one time where the person she's talking to is, like, actually good. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> well, then, I suppose whether or not there's any more to this, I'll just have to believe him for now. Fine, I see. You believe me now? Now you can breathe a sigh of relief as he laid a hand on his chest. I turned to the boy, I pointed my index finger towards him. With the momentum, it made a stiffening sound effect like the ones you read in manga. What you said was pretty misleading. You should have said from the very start that you weren't suspicious. Huh? I'm, uh, sorry. 
I don't know why he was saying sorry suddenly, but he had an apologetic expression on his face. But, you know, I guess that uh, that makes you... What? Well, you know, I guess that makes you unlucky. I mean, coming all the way here to return a lost item only to find he wasn't here. I shouldn't be saying unlucky considering you're Mr. Super High School Level Good Luck himself. No, I'm used to this bad luck. Now, Nagi Kun said letting another bitter expression appear on his face. I mean to be Sleeper High School Level Good Luck and then saying he's used to his bad luck. Somehow it seemed like he has really unreliable talent. Talent. What a strange guy. He's strange, but I don't think I could find a word that suited him more than that. That's because I don't think Makoto has any sort of like lucky talent. Uh, you know, it's not based on luck. There, there, there are other people that are, <laughs> that are uh, that actually use luck as a talent, but Makoto is not really that one. Uh, that said, he's just a strange guy. I mean, he's such an ordinarily ordinary guy. He's strange. According to my notebook, all students at Hope Speak Academy are motivated and look towards the future. They're highly competitive and overflowing with ambition. They're brimming, they're brimming with hope. Uh, if it were me in this situation, I'd end up feeling bad, I guess. But it didn't seem to be the case with him. That might be the reason why I think he's so strange. Nagi Kun suddenly interrupted my train of thought. But if that's true, huh? Without realizing it, I asked him to repeat himself. If what's true? That's nothing. It's not important. He replied hurriedly. It seemed like he was just talking to himself earlier. It's not important that you can tell me. What do you mean if that's by if that's true? I end up responding with an uncharacteristically strong tone of voice. Somehow this guy's entire nature and attitude makes him strange. Hey, tell me already. Uh, if it's not important, then you should tell me. I'm right, aren't I? Hurry up and reply. Okay, okay. You should only reply with okay once. I'm not your teacher. Who Who is Ryoko? What did she do? She's become like an, a completely different personality. It's super weird. I only said it once, didn't I? Not really. I've already forgotten. Uh, whatever. Just hurry up and tell me. If you don't want to tell me, I'll end up forgetting what it is you're telling me. Well, you see, I've only heard a rumor. So I'm not sure if I can believe it, but I thought it might be true. Rumor. I once again raised my finger uh, towards him, pointing it only a few centimeters from his forehead. Was there a rumor about me? I won't stand for any awful rumors out there taining my good name. No, it's nothing like that. So what sort of rumor is it? Um, it's Nagi Kun looked away uh, from me before hesitantly continuing. The rumor said that students that, sorry, said there are students that's become forgetful. Become forgetful? Somehow I couldn't say anymore. Any knowledge of the string of sentences together had mysteriously disappeared. I was planning to ask him if he knew me before I became forgetful. Ah, I suddenly raised my voice. I shuddered as if I'd been hit by a thunderbolt. Uh, what's wrong? nagi turned to me again with a worried expression. I quickly opened uh, Ryoko Tanashi's memory notebook uh, again and flipped through the pages and flipped and flipped and flipped and I saw a light that blinded my eyes for a moment. There was an explosion. The memories in my notebook and a flash of inspiration collided together and caused a violent chemical reaction. The image in my notebook was a single letter. Dear super high school level idiotic forgetful girl, I'm the one who took all your precious past memories that you so carefully wrote down. They're filled to the brim with memories of that uh, Yasuke Matsuda. The past carries a lot of weight, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Am I right? It does. Hey, earlier you, you said a student had become forgetful, didn't you? I was overtaken by an immense excitement as I stood up. So then the students here know, uh, know about me before I became forgetful. You too, right? You also knew me before I was forgetful. Speak up. Calm down. I can desperately tried to settle me down. I don't really know, but... Seems like it was due to some sort of illness, uh, but I wasn't really paying too much attention since I'm not really all that good at talking to people. It's fine, just hurry up and tell me. Did you know me before I was forgetful? Did you? Um, well, that's... Go on. Yeah, you finally gave me a small nod. I, I knew it, I confirmed myself. The students at the school knew me before I'd become forgetful. That means I had become forgetful after coming to the school. So then, what about that blackmail uh, Junko Anishima had written to me about my past memories? Did I ever really have such an important memory notebook? No, maybe it was all a trap and so she'd get me to cooperate with her. In other words, a lie. So then what else did it say? Oh, uh, did she say? Let's see, first she told me she killed someone in the central plaza. She also told me that I, I had to kill Matsuda-kun in the first place. Does a person like Junko Inoshima even exist? As my thoughts circled through my head, I tried to remain focused on my notebook. Lie and Junko Inoshima were the two key phrases that uh, were becoming more apparent. The words written on the page started to swirl across my around my mind. They gradually grew faster, swirling, turning, circling, and mixed and mingled together. For some reason, the depths of my head began to tingle. It was a strange, tingling feeling. The sensation is... Oh, I feel like I'm remembering something. Hey, an annoying voice came pounding into my thoughts. It was an Aegakun's voice. He didn't seem bothered by anything. I stopped concentrating on my notebook. I think I can almost remember it. Hey, shut up. Hey, uh, come on, I'm trying to concentrate here. Hey, would you shut up already? I shouted at him and raised my face from my notebook. I froze. I saw an unfamiliar man standing in front of us. Uh, who's that? He grabbed Nagi Kun's shoulders. He wore an unfamiliar school uniform and had unfamiliar long hair. His pitch black silhouette was vastly different to his ghostly white face. Piercing eyes similar to a reptile uh, had been carved into his face. 
Our eyes met for a brief moment. A siren inside my head rang out, informing me of the dire emergency. I felt like I was having a heart attack as I felt my chest pound faster. Hey, Nagikun's uh, face looked shocked. His entire body had gone stiff, and he opened his mouth. He came in after us. Do you know him? If you do by chance know him, could you do me a favor and tell him to get let go of me? Unfortunately, it seems I have no, I've got no idea who he is, I answered him. Uh, Oi, what was that? The strange man growled in a low voice. Don't tell me you forgot me already. That's a little harsh, isn't it? You really do know him? Nagikun asked in a puzzled voice. The man drifted down to him suspiciously. Uh, whether we have met before or whether it's simply fate, neither are any of concern to you. He's been caught up in it all. In the end, you just have bad luck. Quickly dropped my line of sight to my notebook and looked for any memories about the stranger. There's only one person that, who came to mind. Could you be Matarai Ishiki-san? Yeah, okay. Alright, that... I didn't remember his name, but I was like, I think this is probably the dude that was, like, chasing her that one time. Uh, that's right. Late that night in the Central Plaza, I, Matarai, was killed by my own target. Killed? By your own target? Despite what he said, he looked completely uninjured to me. I am immortal. Eh? The man sensed my doubts. He smiled broadly and chuckled strangely. Immortal? What is this, a fantasy-based novel? No, that's crazy. I mean, you're not being serious, are you? You're about that? What do you mean? I'm truly immortal. If I were not, I'd be unable to explain how I am now uninjured. Well, I'm not sure about that, but how do you just change the genre to something like a war-based game? Uh, can I speak for a moment? Now you can uh, cut in. The guy who came in after us, Matarai-san, was it? Um, if, you're, if you are Matarai-san, you couldn't mean that you're Matarai-san from the student council? Yeah, student council, I said without thinking. Somehow I could not see this creepy man dressed in all black in the student council. Hmm, I see. The boy knows. Matarai grimaced and closed his eyes before murmuring something. That's right, I'm a survivor from the student council. Survivor? You're still pretending to be innocent after so long? Matarai opened his eyes and stared at me carefully. Because of that incident, all this happened. That incident is the reason behind the state of the student council now. I had luckily escaped with my life, but everybody else had... No, that's not it. Matarai shook his head, as if trying to disprove his own words. That's just wrong for me to say I was lucky I survived. It's more correct to say I simply remained alive. Yes, that's it. I luckily remained alive. I was not even given the chance to fight, and for that, I shall not just forgive them. I will absolutely not forgive them with stealing my chance to protect the student council. Who was it? Who did it? Uh, Matarai spat out as he clenched his hands around Nagikun's shoulders. The boy's face distorted with pain, but he still attempted to object despite his discomfort. Excuse me, I don't really know the details, but I understand you feel angry about what happened to the student council, and I understand that you hate the person who did this. I think it might be good to, instead, consider rebuilding the student council before anything else. Rebuild it? Me? Matarai scoffed. Now, in the first place, why do you even think someone like me belongs in the student council? Huh? I was only elected, so uh, the other members would be able to relax. After all, I'm only the super high school level bodyguard. I did what I could for the student council in the past, now, and forever. I'm just a protector, that's all. I heard Matarai grind his teeth. His voice was filled with bitter hatred. Uh, during that time of emergency, I was not fit to help them. I wasn't even a target during the incident. Perhaps a criminal did not consider me to be a member of the student council. Can you even imagine how humiliating this has been for me? I wasn't even given a chance to utilize my own talent. The feeling I had from having my own talent trampled on was, well, you best is better be imagining what it felt like so you can relate. Okay. Matter I gripped Nagikun's shoulders even more tightly. The pain of the young man felt only increased and he yelled out, Now I can only protect the remaining dignity of the, stu of the student council. It will not end until I have atoned for the student council. I must confront it. That's why I must exact revenge. I'm no longer able to slack off. I'm willing to do anything. The man's eyes were stained red, not focusing on anything anymore. In any case, the man seemed completely settled on the idea of pushing his point. I don't know anything about what happened. I ended up trying to excuse myself for whatever actions I did. I felt an overwhelming, overwhelming fear come over me as I desperately tried to make an excuse to run away. I don't have anything at all to do with the student council or know anything about any incidents that happened or anything dangerous to that sort at all. I'm just an innocent bystander. As if, matter I disagreed. He sounded like... Um... What? He sounded like... He was making a death threat to his worst enemy. We talked about it earlier. You know all about that incident. I really don't know anything about it. If you think I'm lying, then please look at this notebook. I opened uh, Ryoko Fanashi's memory notebook and weighed in front of Matarai. I haven't written anything in here about it. This is my proof. I don't know anything about it and I have nothing to do with it. Would you cut the crap already? A voice overflowing with fury pierced through my notebook to me. That notebook of yours doesn't prove anything. Why are you hiding the truth? Are you the criminal's apprentice? I uh, can't talk about it? Or maybe you're really... I said I have nothing to do with it. I suddenly screamed at him. I instantly regretted doing so. I only added fuel to the fire. I thought he'd be really angry at me, but it seems like my prediction was way off, Mark. In fact, his face was surprisingly blank. 
His emotions had flatlined. He didn't even blink. Any concept of time around the man had come to a complete stop. Nagi Kun sensed Matarai's malice and looked behind him timidly. Come to think of it, I haven't heard this boy's name yet, have I? Uh, he remained expressionless, only the mouth moving. I'm Nagi Makoto. Uh, hear that, Matarai laughed softly and leaned down to speak in Nagi Kun's ear. Say, Nagi Kun, uh, were you listening to what I was saying before? Huh? Matarai suddenly released Nagi Kun's shoulders, only to place both of his hands on either side of Nagi Kun's head. Ah! Nagi Kun's face instantly morphed into a terrified expression. I said earlier, didn't I? I'm willing to do anything for vengeance. Matarai looked like a demon as he opened his mouth. He smiled and laughed, his voice full of poisonous venom. This is bad, this guy is incredibly dangerous. Somehow I was only left with the ability to shiver and tremble like a frightened little bunny. I have no choice but to make a run for it, and quick. You're not thinking of running, are you? Eh? My foot suddenly stopped in midair. If you do that, what do you think will happen to this boy here? Eh? Eh? As I heard this, Nagi Kun's face changed from blue to white. Wow, what a colorful face he has. Uh, this is the last warning you get, so watch yourself. If you don't obey me, this guy's head will be tragically crushed in an unfortunate accident. What the? I can only feel confused, uh, both of them looking at me. Say something. Matarai stare intimidated me, like he was about to do something reckless. Help me, Nagi Kun's eyes pleaded to me, intimidating eyes and pleading eyes. Both were entirely focused on me, and what a bother. It was a bother to go to the hassle of doing either. There's nothing I would really be able to do, or wanted to do. I guess. That's why, for me, this was something that had nothing to do with me. Uh, that's right, it has nothing to do with me. Sure, I happened to be swept along with the current, but that's all. I wasn't involved with the creation of the situation at all. I don't even know anything about what happened, or, or that's why it has... Nothing to do with me, 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 nothing to do with me. I mumbled quietly, reminding uh, the people in front of me, as well as my, just myself. I was mumbling my magical enchantment. Huh? Huh? Uh, having heard that, both Matarai and Nagi Kun looked at me with a vacant expressions. What do you mean it has nothing to do with you? Confused Matarai raised his voice. There's no way you're not involved. After it's, uh, your fault, this boy here has been caught up in all this. You're wrong, I found myself replying flatly. I'm not the reason as to why he became involved in this whole thing. He got himself involved. It's not my fault he has got awful luck. In the end, I really have nothing to do with this. H hey, wait. Um, <laughs> Nagi Kun tried to interrupt me as I raised my voice to continue my argument. It's a shame, but it's obvious Nagi Kun has no luck at all. I said in the calmest tone I could muster. I he just has an insane power to take and give life because of his complete lack of luck. So I think you have no choice but to give up. Anyway, no matter what the, the case is, I've already forgotten. After all, I forget everything sooner or later, with the exception of Ma uh, Matsuda Kun. So as far as I see it, there's not really much out there that actually has does have anything to do with me. I continue to mutter myself these words. In all truth, I had nothing to do with it. Then I'll forget that too. My brief meeting with Nagi Kun, the information he knew, I'll forget that as well. There's no reason for me to feel bad about him. So that's why uh, I always say this has nothing to do with me. Have you decided what you're going to do? I don't know, I keep telling you this has nothing to do with me, I answer blankly. That's so. I see, matter I bared his teeth murmuring uh, in a low voice. I hope you're prepared to see the extent of my resol uh, resolution. Uh, there really are strange people who are ready to go as far as kill another human in order to prove their point. It's insane to think he would accomplish anything by killing Nagi Kun. Nagi Kun really doesn't have any luck. He's got himself into a hostage situation after all. This is the end. Uh, matter I gripped Nagi Kun's skull with all the strength in his hands and. No, you're wrong! I, I just imagine that's. <laughs> Makoto like pops up and just be like, no, actually, let me counter you. Play the, play the trial music and all that sort of stuff. Um, no, this has got to be somebody else. Uh, you're wrong. A voice resounded throughout the room. That seemed to dissolve the tension in the air. A crazy person ran into the lab. The figure appeared to slide towards Matarai and hammered the what? And hammered the back of their fist into the man's nose, making it bend to a strange angle. Matarai squinted his eyes uh, shut in pain. He seemed to lose sight of his attacker as he fell down. After giving Matarai's chest a prod, the stranger turned to Nagi Kun and grasped his head in their hands before moving to pick Nagi Kun up. They placed him gently on top of the bed and turned around. Matarai flew towards him. The stranger gracefully roundhouse kicked and hit Matarai square on the chin. Uh, the blow completely smashed his key point and rocked his head violently. He fell to the ground, having no energy left. By the way, this scene I just witnessed, it passed in the blink of an eye. The stranger skillfully landed without making a sound after they finished their kick. Their skirt gently floated down. Oh, there is she. Ikusaba-san. Ooh. Nagi called out uh, from, from the bed in relief. Ikusaba-san. It seemed like uh, that is uh, the girl's, this girl's name. Of course, this is the first time I've heard her name. Nagi Kun uh, got it from the bed and ran hurriedly to the girl. Uh, thank you, Kisaba san. Thank you so much, he said, thank her over and over again. However, the girl co remained completely calmed and composed in response. Well, I say calm and composed, but I think it's more like she just didn't feel anything. I was only helping a classmate. She mumbled quietly to herself. Stubbornly, Kisaba san avoided his gaze. But it's odd, looking at her now, you wouldn't guess 
He had just been fighting brilliantly only a few moments beforehand. Ah, but Ikusaba-san, why are you here? I must admit, I was wondering the same thing. Usually it's only Masada kun in this lab. That's what I had written down in my notes. Uh, also, it seems like he's absent today, but he's been getting a multitude of visitors. Maybe he's working on something big? Oh, um... Ikusaba-san raised her voice slightly, uh, but that was barely above a whisper. I listened carefully. I was just passing by? <laughs> think she i don't know do you think she was checking up on on makoto it's like canon that she at least like liked him in some way right uh i remember that was that had a lot to do with danganronpa if which isn't canon but i think a lot of the character motivations are canon i, I, I don't know it's one of those like weird things so that is uh you know could be could be something to along those lines um why do you phrase it as a question i asked without thinking because i was on you haven't changed one bit and i couldn't interrupted then you were just uh, passing by when you came across what was happening and came to save us, right? Ikusaba uh, uh, nodded in response. Uh, that's it. And he saved me. I was getting worried for a moment there. Thank you, Ikusaba san. Thank you so much. Nagikun sighed a breath of relief and continued to repeat a sincere thanks much to Ikusaba san's embarrassment. I, I was really lucky. I was really lucky. You were just passing by. I was so lucky. Luck. Uh, somehow that was how we were saved. Pure luck. But that is only uh, in a manner of speaking. All thanks to such a strong person who was passing by, we were able to escape from such a predicament, but this luck was really convenient and good. On the other hand, though, Matarai's actions were inconvenient, to say the least. Uh, so this is a super high school level good luck, but if this is, uh, but if it is luck, I can't help but feel it's all because of it that we were caught up in, in all this. Excuse me. Eh? I suddenly realized Yuku Sabasan was standing right in front of me. Ah! I looked back without thinking. Now that I think about it, did I really not notice her? Did she teleport? For some reason, Ikusaba remained silent. I waited for her to show any signs of opening her mouth to speak, but I ended up giving in and raising my own voice. Um, nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for earlier. Eh? And Aikun raised his voice in surprise. He walked to us, invading our line of sight as he blinked in surprise. But what was so surprising? Uh, I'm Mukuru Ikusaba. I turned my head to the side slightly in response. Ikusaba-san raised her voice a little more. I'm the super high school level soldier from the seven, from the 78th batch. Uh, nice to meet you. Without even blinking, she moved her mouth as little as possible as she introduced herself. The moment she finished, she returned to utter silence. Speaking honestly, she seemed like a quiet girl by nature. Then again, she is a super high school level soldier. She probably acts like this around everyone. Perhaps every soldier is like this? Or I haven't met any members of the military before, so I have no way of knowing. I just don't know. I was in silence with her. Even Aggie-kun was silent, but uh, he was as puzzled as before. Matter I still foaming at the mouth uh, was, of course, silent too. Everyone was silent. An awkward silence. But the awkwardness didn't last long. After some time, I forgot about the awkward silence. Instead, another thought wandered into my mind. And now that I think about it, Matsudakun isn't here. Oh wow, crazy. We're still back to this. Uh, that's right, the only thing I, I can even remember is Matsudakun. I wonder if Matsudakun's on an errand. I want to see him soon. I hope he comes back quickly. My thoughts continued as I stared into space and uh, the girl crashed down suddenly. Um, I think her name was Yukusaba-san. Uh, what's wrong? The surprise boy... Uh, Nayagi kun uh, I think, asked. The girl replied in a warning tone. Someone's there. The atmosphere of the lab became much more tense. Yo, there is a party at Masuda's office. That's crazy. Uh, hiding? Sorry for interrupting. Uh, I wasn't trying to hide. But you shouldn't spread rumors about people. A voice arose and everyone instinctively looked around the lab. Huh? But no matter how hard we looked, there wasn't anyone there. No, I'm here. Look, look, over here. Uh, where? Feeling somewhat panicked, I continued to look around the room uh, restlessly. Over there, Nagi Kun pointed out, Ikusaba decided to walk to the laboratory door. I noticed a little later than the others. In front of the door was a, a boy with a pure innocent face. Yup. Oh, you finally noticed me? Uh, the boy's face lacked any distinct features. His voice also had a complete lack of any unique tones. Uh, it took you a little while, but you noticed me in the end. Well, it's my talent's fault, so it can't be helped. I'll forgive you. Why is there a kid here? Nagi Kun suddenly said and taken it aback by the boy. Hey, hey, you shouldn't treat me like I'm a kid. I don't think it's rare to see someone with a baby face, but I'm a... Meritorious high school student at Host Academy. I even went through the trouble of using a difficult word like meritorious. I've never heard that word before. Oh, what's all this then? Uh, this, the boy's line of sight fell to where matter I was. Oh my, oh my, it looks like you've gotten yourself into quite a mess. Ah, you're wrong about that. Nagikun quickly ran in between the boy and matter I, trying to obstruct his view. Uh, how to put it, it might look like a slight accident, but the boy patted his hand on Nagikun's shoulder. I ah, don't fret, there's no need to make excuses around me. I'm actually also investigating this case. Isn't that right, big sis? Ooh, eh? But having the the reins of his of his great story handed over to me, I didn't remember anything about it at all. I wasn't able to muster any more than I guess so, and then told my head to the side. Right, I forgot uh, that uh that that he called um Ryoko Big Sis. Uh, she's not gonna be able to back him up like it anyway. Huh? Don't tell me you've forgotten about me again. He folded his arms and nodded happily. 
Well, I'm used to people forgetting who I am, so it's fine. It's just another side effect of my talent. Look, I said I had no presence, didn't I? People don't notice me very often, and they say they forget about me a lot. But you know, Big Sis. The boy started rubbing his hands and raised his voice again. I have a request that this time, when I say my name, you remember it. My name is Kamishiro Yuto. I'm a super high school level spy from the 77th batch. Wait a second, I protested as the boy came closer to me. I opened up uh, Ryoko Tanashi's memory notebook and tried to find any memories mentioning the boy. Ah, I got it, Kamishiro-kun. I remember you, Kamishiro-kun with absolutely no uh, unique features whatsoever. I wouldn't say none, murmured Ikusaba with a neutral expression. It looks like a doll made by someone with the creativeness of a politician. But he gives off bad vibes. I didn't think she was the type to say things so bluntly. Kamishiro-kun uh, glared at Ikusaba-san for a moment before returning his stare to me and said in a very over-the-top voice, well then, it's really awful that uh, you're so f forgetful, big sis. When you first told me I thought you were joking, I almost laughed, haha. <laughs> Wait, this isn't something you should confess in front of a person. Uh, having heard him, Nagi-kun quickly interjected, but Kamashiro-kun paid him no mind. Uh, I don't need to be careful. I've always thought about being careful with this for losers, but I don't think you have any experience with that, do you, big bro? You see, I understand completely. Kamashiro-kun slipped past Nagi-kun and stood in front of me and made sure we were face-to-face -face before saying anything more. You really are amazingly forgetful, saying such dissy things that don't really fit you, uh, but I like it. Actually, there are a lot of girls out there who have dissy personalities now that I think about it. In fact, my equipment down below gets a little harder just thinking about them. We all blinked in surprise. The culprit was, of course, the blunt, explicit adult joke. I, I don't know, jokes are supposed to be funny, and that wasn't really funny. Well, in any case, uh, she's my client, so I'm generally relieved to see nothing happen to her. But in the end, Kamashiro Kun turned his line of sight back to Madurai. No matter how much I think about it, I can't decide if this is a bad situation or not. I thought it really was. You know, they say my personality is warm and friendly enough to melt all ice cream in a convenience store. Though I suppose something like that is more of a pet peeve to some. I honestly can't make sense of this last bit. Mm, I think maybe it was overkill. Nagi Kun once, uh, once again began to apologize about the situation. How to put it, perhaps it's better to say it was self defense. That's not what I meant, Kamashiro Kun uh, said, hitting him lightly. He slowly walked over to Matarai's body and mumbled to himself. I honestly, talk about a worst case scenario. Well, it won't solve anything, anyhow. But when he wakes up, will you resort to violence again? What will you do? You can't just leave him here now, can you? Well, if we all go to the security department and explain, uh, we can't do that, big bro. He stared at Nagi Kun analyzing him. You do know I came all the way here uh, so I could have an important talk with to Big Sis, my client. You understand? It's an important talk, got it? What I'm trying to say is we're too busy. Um, but Nagi Kun was completely overpowered by Kamashiro Kun's icy cold stare. Unexpectedly, a voice sounded out throughout the room. I did something about it. Uh, everyone turned back to look at Ikusaba-san. The girl quickly lowered her gaze to the ground and repeated it herself. I'll do something about it. And you can do it by yourself? Kamashiro Kun asked, drawing closer to her. The girl nodded. The heck, do you even understand me? The next moment, Kamashiro Kun's eyes sparkled brightly. I see, I see, I get it now. You can take care of all this by yourself? Hmm, hmm, hearing that really puts my mind at ease. Ah, oh, by the way, it'll be better not to mention this to the security department, since it'll be difficult to deal with them. Wait a second, Nagi Kun interrupts. Uh, erupted it again. We don't properly explain the situation. Ikusaba-san will be blamed. Huh? Kamashiro Kun remained s staring intently at Nagi Kun. I couldn't imagine his young face anymore and felt myself get hot. Nagi Kun remained dead silent. You still don't get me, even though I've said it a million times already. Big Sis and I are busy. We have no time to help you clear this up. You side characters can go ahead and uh, do it without our permission. In the first place, since you, since you are the guys that resorted to such a violent uh, solution, it makes you the bad guys. For me, I would have done a much better job. He continued to prattle on about his self-importance. Nagi Kun uh, <clears throat> could uh, couldn't find any words to reply with, but somehow he had not yet lost his head. Uh, Ikusaba-san murmured a little more. It's okay, I'll do something about it. So Ikusaba-san, it's fine. With a short sentence, Ikusaba-san uh, managed to silence the warring Nagi Kun. Kamashiro Kun and I turned to one another and muttered, "It might be good to head off now." Well, then it's decided. Kamashiro Kun had an innocent smile on his face and he clapped his hand, his hands happily. Leave the job to Big Sis over there. Idiotic Big Sis and I are gonna go somewhere else. Kamashiro Kun grabbed my hand with a quick, Yay, let's go, let's go. We started acting like a child dragging his poor parents to the toy store. But wait a moment. It's fine, it's fine. You wanna go back to your peaceful old life, don't you, Big Sis? So we should just uh, quiet down and come with me. Kamashiro Kun continued dragging me along behind him until we reached the door of the lab. I looked back hopelessly. The ever expressionless Ikusada san Nagi Kun looking worried again stood up. Nagi Kun took a single step. He had a look of determination. He quickly became startled, however. Ikusaba-san had laid her hand on his shoulder. He looked back to her, he warned him, and nodded softly. Seeing that Nagi-kun seemed to give in, relaxing his shoulders, he turned to look at me once more. The two figures disappeared in the distance. Now then, let's move on into our best. The moment we entered the hallway, Kamashiro-kun excitedly cheered. Let's solve your problem. 
Come, Shirokun, continue to walk, leave me behind. Ah, oh, wait for me. I called out as hurriedly uh, as I hurriedly ran after him, but my mind was drifting elsewhere. I was thinking about Nagikun looking at me for that last moment. His eyes sent me a burning feeling of unease. The individual named uh, Nagi Makoto gave me a sense of unreliability and had a weak demeanor. But in the depths of his eyes at that moment, there was incredible strength from his very core that shook all my previous preconceptions of who this person was. He looked at me with a dazzling aura. Whether there was a problem, whether he had an unbeatable energy, he always would have a strength so strong he could never give up. Such an unforeseeable person looked straight at me with those eyes. I don't understand how I can feel uh, this way around such a strange, mysterious face. Force. However, I doubt I'll ever need to know. After all, he has nothing to do with me, but that's not just a reason I'm using because it suits me. I just feel as though he basically has nothing to do with me. For example, as if we were in alternate dimensions, surely Nagikun's story and my own story will never cross paths again. In conclusion, we have nothing to do with each other. I felt like that for some reason. So I'll forget that boy with a reason, and that was what I concluded as I walked down the biology building. Always. Uh, in fact, in just a matter of min minutes, I completely forgot of his existence. Okay, so that was, I guess, a chapter. That was really long, and um, man, that like, it is intense, and it was really nice to see Makoto and, and Bukuro. Uh, that's really cool to see them pop up in the story. Um, Kamashiro is awful. I mean, I don't know what it is with Danganronpa and loving their, like, small, chubby, pervy characters, but, like, Kamashiro is really awful. Uh, I dislike him a lot. I feel like Madurai is kind of, like, unnecessary, but, like, I don't know. I don't really get what he's doing. So, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're making our way through, and, uh, we're, we're doing what we can, but, uh, yeah, we have finished... Uh, what is labeled as chapter 3 for volume 2, so hopefully y'all enjoy this. Uh, if so, I mean, leave your thoughts in the comments, and, uh, yeah, we're gonna continue next time, and we'll start at chapter 4. Uh, may, might just do one chapter at a time, I don't really know. We'll, I'll figure that out as I move, uh, forward on with that, but, uh, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, let me know, and I will see you all next time, so, till then, peace out.